with your face bent to the ground. Do you admit or deny that you did this? I declare it, and make no denial. You can go wherever you please, free and clear of a heavy charge. You, however, tell me, not at length, but briefly, did you know an edict had forbidden this? I knew it. How could I not? It was public. And even then you dared overstep that law? Yes, since it was not Zeus that published me that edict. And since not of that kind are the laws which justice, who dwells below with the gods, established among men. Nor did I think your edicts were of such force that a mortal could override the unwritten and unfailing statutes given us by the gods. Die I must, that I knew well. How can I not? That is true even without your edict. But if I am to die before my time, I count that a game. When one lives as I do, surrounded by evils, how can he not carry off gain by dying? So for me to meet this doom is a grief of no account. But if I had to endure that in death my mother's son should lie an unburied corpse, that would have grieved me. Yet for this, I am not grieved. And if my present actions are foolish in your sight, perhaps it is a fool who accuses me of folly. She shows herself the wild offspring of a wild father and does not know how to bend before troubles. Yet remember that overhard spirits most often collapse. It is the stiffest iron, baked to utter hardness in the fire, that you most often see snapped and shivered. I have seen horses with great spirit, disciplined by a small bit. For there is no place for pride when one is his neighbor's slave. This girl was practiced in outrage already before she overstepped the published laws. And that done, now this now is a second outrage that she glories in it and exults in her deed. Then I am no man. But she is, if this victory rests with her, and brings no penalty. No! Whether she is my sister's child, or nearer to me in blood than any of my kin who worship Zeus at the altar of our house, she and her sister will not escape a doom most harsh. For I charge that other with an equal share in the plotting of this burial. Call her out! I saw her inside just now raving and uncontrolled of her wits. The mind often is convicted of stealthy crimes when conspirators are playing depravity in the dark. But truly I detest it too when one who has been caught in treachery then seeks to make their crime a glory. What more do you want than to capture and kill me? I want nothing else. Having that, I have everything. Why then do you wait when none of your edicts is there anything that pleases me? And may there never be! Similarly to you, my views must be displeasing. But how can I have won a nobler glory than by giving burial to my own brother? All here would say they approve if fear did not grip their tongues. But tyranny, blessed with so much else, has the power to do and say whatever it pleases. You alone, out of all Thebans, see it that way. They do too, but for you they hold their tongues. Are you not ashamed that your beliefs differ from theirs? There is nothing shameful in respecting your own flesh and blood. Was not he your brother too, who died in the opposite cause? A brother by the same mother and the same father. Why then do you pay a service that is disrespectful to him? The dead man will not support you in that. Yes, he will, if you honor him equally with the wicked one. Who knows but that these actions are pure to those below? The good man pays a portion not equal to the evils. Nevertheless, Hades craves these rights. You do not love someone you have hated, not even after death. It is not my nature to join in hate, but in love. Then go down in hell and love them if you must. While I live, no woman will rule me. Look, here comes Ismene from her palace, shedding the tears of her loving sister. A cloud over her eyes mars her red-flushed face and it breaks into rain on her comely cheek. You, who are lurking like a viper in my own house, gulping up my life's blood, while well, I was oblivious that I was nurturing two plagues, two revolutions against the throne. Tell me now, do you also affirm your share in this burial, or do you forswear any knowledge of it? I perform the deed as long as she concurs, and I share and carry the burden of guilt. No. 
Justice will not support you in this, as you were you're not willing to help with the deed, nor did I give you a part in it. But now, with the sea of troubles around you, I am not ashamed to sail in the sea of suffering at your side. As to whose deed it is, Hades and the dead are the witnesses. A friend in words is not the type of friend I love. No, sister, do not strip me of death's honor, but let me die with you and pay due consecration to the dead. Do not share my death. Do not claim deeds to which you do not put your hand. My death will suffice. And how can I cherish life? Once I'm deprived of you. Ask Creon ah! to concern us for him. Why do you torture me like this when it does not help you? If I mock you, it is to my own pain that I do so. And tell me, how can I help you even now? Save yourself. I do not grudge your escape. Ah, oh, misery. Am I to fall short of sharing in your fate? It was your choice to live. It was mine to die. At least your choice was not made without my protests. One world approved your wisdom, another approved mine. Nevertheless, the offense was identical for both of us. Take heart. You live. But my life has long been in death's hands, so that I might serve the dead. One of these maidens, I declare, has just revealed her true feelings. The other has displayed it in the moment of her birth. Yes, Creon. Whatever amount of reason nature has given them does not stay with those in dire straits, but goes astray. Yours did when you chose dire actions with dire allies. Like this is there for me alone, without her presence. Do not speak of her presence. She lives no longer. What? You would kill your own son, Pride? Why not? There are other fields for him to plow. But none fitted to him as she was. I abhor an evil wife for my son. Hey, Mom, dearest, how your father wronged you. Enough! Enough of you and your marriage! Will you really cheat your son of this girl? Death it is, who will end these bridles for me. Then it seems. Resolved, yes, for you and by me. No more delay. Servants, take them inside. Hereafter, they must be women and not left at large. For even the brave seek to flee when they see death now closing in on their life. Blessed are those who have not yet tasted of evil. For when a house has once been shaken by the gods, no form of ruin is lacking, but it spreads over the bulk of the race, just as when the surge is driven over the darkness of the deep, it rolls up the black sand from the depths, and the front winds that front blow the storm give out a mournful roar. 